tries to find a shot toward the bathrooms. Actually does decent damage on Dupree. He's gone into the red. It might get worse than that. No, he won't because Get Right runs out of ammo. That's Zonic to get the kill as he swings back around. And Draken from the back stairs has to be somewhat careful of his approach because if he goes down as well, he's going to have real problems. In fact, that they're low enough on HP on the other side may benefit, but it is now on to Draken. One versus three, two of which are within range of a bullet. But unfortunately, with the bomb down, does have a kit. He can make this actually all right. The first kill fast enough that he can't approach. He can leave the site to get aggressive, but he wants to put the smoke out instead. Five seconds, remember, not ten. Already spotted, knows they're toward the bathrooms, and he's just... Ooh, okay, fair enough. I thought he was just going to hold it. This actually is all right. Kirby last alive has nine HP. Draken doesn't know it, though. This time he will hold, because he knows there's a timer on the smoke, and Dupree has no idea. Dupree's got the angle wrong. Draken's oh, got the round. Oh, wow. One on three, and Dupree so tentative there. Turning to plant, now it's even into a 2v2. Both these players are either one or two shotable though, so it should be an easy retake for enemies if they play this in a smart way. And there's the first kill. Fallen's also very low. They might not expect him to be in this quarter though. Usually you don't see two players stacking together here, so that would be the one advantage Fallen has in this situation, and he's picked up the first kill. One more to go if he can delay this long enough. He can find RPK, you can see him trying to lean towards the headshot angle, but ultimately, oh, he gets the entire A main pressure, so it's basically just this last second beat that we have to worry about. Next MS doing a relatively okay job of holding out there, but still will get traded after only one pickup, so it makes things a little bit delicate for the envious side of things. They're playing it well though, they're not over-rotating, they're not trying to push players in the more aggressive spots to get kills early on here. They're playing it well, but Fur is going to play him one better. He's able to take down Scream on the flank. Cold actually finds Happy from outside the rock, too. They're losing this advantage again, and they have no right to. Sixer at least gets the quick trade onto Fur and brings it down to a 1v1. So now he's going to hunt out Cold. Neither player have any utility to work with. It doesn't look like Sixer's going to pick anything up off these dead bodies, either. Look at Cold Zara's spot. He's playing back in that, like, rainbow archway, that new uh, kind of uh, depressed back in the wall arch. So he can get this long angle, and he looks very dark against that wall, I think, so he's hard to spot. I don't think Sixer is going to inherently go right for the check on that spot either. He's going to check some more of the position, so as he goes, Ooh. oh, hits the swing shot and takes down Cold Zera. Should have just enough time to defuse that bomb as well, giving the round Shooting up way harder. That would be the risk that Bolts decides to take and unfortunately loses his life upon here in this run. Envious again, that bit of hesitance is showing up once more though, as they back away from their presence at B. And they're gonna quickly rotate into the mid connector. Now you can see in the suicide steps there, Taco is hearing all of this right now. So he's called this out to his teammates, so there's gonna be a quick rotate moving over. That Could does have not Sarah. include, actually it does include Sarah, he's gonna go to heaven. Already found impact, and so does Taco too. He's gonna be able oh, to line up a good shot. A second one from Cold. Now gives them back the man advantage, but Happy also finding trades. Doesn't last very long though. Cold Zara is able to take him down. All of a sudden, Scream has been pincered in a 1v2 situation. We'll focus on. Oh, it seemed like he was gonna focus on getting the plant. He wants to try and fake them out first. He didn't get from someone like Cold, and he will get that. Just not from the position he was expecting. Cold's gonna take him down. He's actually very quickly prepping for another B hit as well. So with SK still having a lot of players kind of hard pressed in day, this could make the site a bit weaker, but Envy's keys hit their entries right from the bat, and right now, that's not what they're doing. Taco finds the first kill. We see a response from RPK, and he might be the one player that allows Red Beast to get something going in this oh. round. Continues to spam in, hits his third kill. All three of the entries are from him, and that gives Envious control over the B site. He moves the rotates with not a whole lot to do. Leave them with room to, they might still be able to bargain their way back in. Like I said before, it's the poke and prod right now. Moving in, not really committing to this retake, but if they can get an additional kill, they'll probably go for it. Push back in here, attempts to hit the quick shot, won't make it happen. Fur does find access to Sixer though, but he's low, he's down at 10 HP. This is still going to be a very, very tough retake for him. Makes it past Broken at least. It's past that initial shot from Scream. Rotates back in, RPK will be able to move out and... Call removed the Skittle bug. Stake and really? flames, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I came up with this. Yeah. <laughs> this was my idea. Claim dominion over this. It's like when a friend shows you a, so a song and they're like, you have to tell everybody that I should do that song. It's like, <laughs> why does it matter? This came from me. Drop control with the cost of a Molly smoke flash, $900, and RPK's in. Can he find his 40 bomb? It is a split 2 2 defense as well, so they only are going to have to deal with one offer along with Cold Zara. And there it is, number 40 from RPK. He's up there now. Bolts, though, is still trying to shut this round down. RPK again, the man to stop it and maybe the man to win it as he's up to three with a kill against Fallen. Left enough room to plant, too. His first still going to be quite a rotate away. 
Doesn't actually know where he's coming from yet either, but it might make it obvious as he was kind of rushing up to the door. Was not close enough for RPK to hear it. All that utility is bound to get one of it away, but RPK goes up, gets... There is the presence of terrorists in the palace. I don't know how many Skadoodle finds out. Two more palace as he rings it out. They did let some of them out, which means the ramp play is now going to move in. Machine gun able to take down Skadoodle before he completes the flick onto him. Stewie still alive at Connector. Completes the trade. Rush also finding one more that tried to sneak up towards Ticket here. They're trying to spam in. At least it looks like Mar is trying to spam in and find Stewie, but no, Stewie will get the better of him. It's up to Sugu again to try and clutch this. He's got two kills in very quick fashion, but he has oh. been pincered. However, that third kill brings it down to an even 1v1, and it's Tarek looking to clutch, oh. but he won't do it. Sugu comes out with a massive play for the Mongols. Looks that's like not going to be great. Machine Gun doing some serious work from inside the connector. Well, he ends up getting his punishment, though, from Tarek. He's able to take him down just before he falls back further into the connector there. But that has caused most of C9 to now kind of freeze here, since they don't have the right to plant yet. Flash goes in, spots the player in the back, but did not catch the player behind the barrel. So Sugu is with another big pickup here. Automatic, though, trading back two, and once from a nade. He's now low at 31 HP, but he's going up against an opera, so that doesn't really matter that much. Has to find the right time to one plant to find the sopper and execute him. It's gonna take a bit of a risk here. Get aggressive. Let's see if he can knock him out. But I think Zilkenberg is right into this. He's also gonna be sneaking back here. And he's got the angle now if automatic peaks oh. this, but the timing is gonna be very unfortunate for Zilkenberg if he doesn't watch back out. He's gone inside. Now automatic's gonna have to check this both ways. Even with oh, let's see. No, oh, he saw him there, so sees the rifle and oh spams in and takes that was him a awkward. second. It's going to be finding Forrest here. Easy frag for him, but doesn't really affect the outcome of the round whatsoever. It will be double digits for NIP. Fur recovers the AWP. Lost bonus now will be at fourth stage. And each CT player will have $2,900 into the next round. They're currently all on zero. That's not really a forced situation, but given the fact that they're 10-3 down and they save an AWP, I think they definitely force it. They just need to get these last two rounds. They can't afford to give anything else up. Very quiet scenes over in the SK camp. It's Fur who might not even save the orb here. Hitting some nice shots. NIP have so much cast, they might as well try and take him down and exist. Being a little bit too tentative there. Had a chance to strike. 8 HP for Fur. Making noise as he jumps around. The flames will protect him for now. Oh, he's so smart. The fact he gets towards middle as well just eradicates risks in terms of his chance of survival here. Here's the last player coming in. Nails that as well. He actually gets all five kills. He gets an ace, but they don't win the rounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not common. No, that is. As the bonus rounds usually go down, get right, does find two, does very well there. Maybe even the third as Rez will come through. Forrest oh. takes him down, but he fires through his teammate. It's still okay, it's a three on two situation, but the B bomb site is under control by the T's. The plant comes through and it's up to Forrest to find one kill here to secure the round. He does that and he gets the second, he can't quite, but they know exactly where Fallen is now. Fallen can still play the angles as a flash. Forrest would have been on them sooner if not for the first flash. This one buys time. Fallen does another so close, but resets the gun and takes down Draken as well. Wow. Be rather significant with the point system yeah. as it is, too. Absolutely. It'll be NIP right at the top of that table, almost guaranteed to qualify at that point. But here's Draken trying to shut it down. Nice aggressive approach. Two kills. This is all going wrong. It's a tooth frag as well, Matt. Four on two now, and it all falls apart. This is a full eco, pretty much. What in God's name has just happened? A Zeus skill. A Zeus I, skill oh comes in. Oh my goodness, we seldom see them and not when they matter as well. This one certainly does because it's just Taka remaining and there's pressure applied to his position. It gets picked up for both Exist and Drac and he's down to one HP. One HP, one versus four? Mm, don't think so. This is going to be NIP picking up their 12th round inevitably and Get Right confirms it with a Mac 10 at range. They just didn't see it coming. Using a lot of utility to do that which should hurt them on the retake if Envious end up diving into B that it would appear they're doing now. So why is this guy still playing highway? Why is he not towards B? That's, this is the question. Sure, probably waiting for Intel to come out from Zilkenberg here now. He's just now going to start to spot this. Moves in, but he's finding impact and getting into these Jeez. different positions too. Zilkenberg wreaking havoc here. They try to find him and he swings around. Is it going to be an ace? Might as well be. He's going to get the assist on the last player anyway. And he gets the kill. Zilken into a reaction. It's going to be a re reaction that's not expected though. And it's worked. Simple timing. Stewie's the only one to go to B. He goes down. There's three players left alive. But the fact that they lost a player outside and the expectation is Astral from Astralis is that they're going to funnel the inner inside site. They rush back and catch them off. That's actually quite cool from Cloud9. They get a bomb plant down. Unfortunately, they didn't get a subsequent kill on the re-rotation from Astralis. And Zipix gets found by Tarek, but he's down immediately. It's Skadoodle versus four. Oh. Good flick to find Glaive.
He still has a chance off to win this. Boots. He has device down as well. He certainly does have a chance to win this. They're on the bomb inside of the smoke, and I don't think he would have heard the defuse kit being held because oh! of the flashbang. But without the kit, he had time. He goes to the deagle, a one versus one, and Skadoodles pulled it back in a one versus four. Pre, up close, finds Rush. So excuse me in misreading that. It was actually Kyarby that fell back. I thought he was the one that was further forward, and Zipix will do the same. It's automatic. I put the smoke down to try and allow he and Tarek to get much closer. Dupree needs to act quickly if he's going to get behind them on the flank. It should he's be almost perfect spot. because he's got an automatic down. And the defuse. Oh, the defuse is on it. Tarek, Tarek's got it. Cloud9 got it before they could actually get him inside of the smoke. Unbelievable. I watched the whole thing. That was so sick. They smoked the bomb, Molotov lower ramp, and he went for that play. We need to fuse the bomb site. In fact, goes behind Trip. Here we go. Spot out towards CT. Machine Gun comes back in. So it has gone extremely large in this round, but it's Cold Zera versus Machine Gun in a one-on-one -on -one bomb. Still not planted. 46 seconds is the one thing that Machine Gun does have to work with as he'll grab the bomb and go for the default play. He's timid, isn't he? One of the scariest 1v1s you can have in the game of Counter-Strike. Cold Zera, full HP. You've lost track of him. And here we go. Oh, good find from Cold. Good shot. And as he falls back and looks for the router to be, they're playing the objective he's right now. He's boosted, huh? Scream's boosted he up. He is, on yes, and he's the only pot. one here, too. So this is going to be a free clear of the site. There we go. Easy kill right there for Dupree. It seemed like he was thinking about not shooting to find more. Right? And then he's like, no, nah, I'm not trying to become a, a Reddit post right now. Well, of course, it's very likely that there you know, might have been like one or two players on the site. So he's playing it back, hoping for that possibility, and they don't get it. About holding down the fort, but Sixer moves in. So the Visa little P250 starts it off for these guys. Dupree is going to shut down those dreams almost entirely, however, with the two quick kills that he's found on the AK, and then it's left to Happy on a Deagle. But once we'll if they do end up going towards B, which isn't looking likely as Nico takes off the head of Kenny, there's NBK, the next one up, and he spots two at the B bomb site. So you imagine they're going to grab the bomb and try and take some ground over towards the A side of the map. Yeah, and this is where Guardian. Has to try and step up for phase. Carrigan will actually go aggressive. Be able to find MBK rotating back. They get some some information as well as they spot that lone rotator come in. Guardian now sees Apex over here at long. Going to use the uh, incendiary to keep him at bay. Pushing on up though. Shocks and Apex able to find that frag on Guardian now. Carrigan and Nico left. Two versus two. Bombs still yet to go down. 25 seconds and the rotations are already here. The retake can come in straight away. Bomb plant goes down. Apex quick on the trigger, able to find the first. Now Carrigan 1v2, not meant to be as Apex in with a 4K. That's what it took. For G One kit for Optic on this fourth gun or this fourth round. Yeah, phase looks like they want to try head quickly in towards B. Charging on in, they go HS. Stands to try and keep them at bay. As you say, they don't really have. Too many kits, they've only got the one on HS, but they have to cross that bridge when they get to it. Rain snuck by into the site, but HS finds himself to make it three as the AK does prevail. Sneaks around the back, Olaf has been allowed to get into the site. HS spots it, four frags now, and Nico 1v5. <laughs> and they're doing the thing. Wait, no, they didn't do the thing. No, they did the thing. They're, they're, they're taking a second to do the thing. To do the thing. Maybe when Forklift takes contact. I'm Maybe they won't do the thing. I don't think they're going to do the thing, actually. The thing is boosting, by the way, in case anyone doesn't realize that. But it's basically announcing to the world that CTs be a two quad. Yeah. So the CTs will start to move back in regardless, and they pick up a one for one to start. Still making good progress in terms of site control though, because the quad guys haven't peaked at all yet. So they've been letting them walk. Oh, you still owe it's a banger headshots though, keeping his team in the game as he gets another one, and he's wasted oh. enough time to close out, but he's not. Where's the tail end of it? As we see the execute roll out, you still owe. Why is Azur peaking there? Those quick two pickups. Well, yeah, as we said, leave Azur into the open, Let him, letting him get taken down. The rest of Renegade's holding the post plan here. JK is slightly away from the action, but even from that mid spot, he could probably do quite a bit. Because, yeah, he can just spin around, head into mid here, and cause some serious problems for those highway players if he pushes this at the correct timing. A lot of noise, but they didn't detect him. Steel had to swing around at the last second, but did pick up the frag, and now he's found a second one, too. It's gone to Ustillo again to clutch this in the 1v2 scenario. As the he's pushed up, they try to surround him, they didn't realize he was on the other side of quad. Gets that first kill for free, and snap! Brings him back into somewhat good straights, now that we're tied at least into a 3v3. The B site still is actually going to be a little bit tricky. They've got a player sitting in the back boxes. Pickens makes quick work of him, but Twist oh, moves in. Twist down at least one kill. Close. Yeah. And JKS will be able to take him down, leading just JDM in the fight. So another kind of close shape for the Renegades, but unless 
JDM can come out on top of this 1v2. It should be under the control of them as they now push into the double digits here. Liquid, unfortunately, still only one round on the board. Ustilo isn't alive, so he does have a chance. JKS this could be it. is going to now probably... JDM should actually have a pretty good idea as to where JKS is moving from. But here and see as he Ooh. lines it right up, knocks out JKS, and gets a massive one. 4v2. Both Nitro and Elyse have their post plant positions set up here. Renegade's probably taking a second to themselves, so the IGL can call the plant, and they're gonna go. Nitro holding for the first kill, but it's immediate trade. This is great for the Renegades. Elyse, though, now the pressure is on for him. They're trying to outright clutch this. He's got it down to the 1v2, and he spams in to kill both of the remaining players. Securing the run the T's, though, lets JKS burst out, kill both the rotators, which has probably made Elyse a little bit angry, to be honest, is now, all of a sudden, he's gotta carry the team on his back and get these last two kills. Elyse hasn't had info a long time, but he moves in, catches the first player, bypasses the guy at Forklift, simply because he doesn't realize he's there. Up to the bomb, though, and already tapping onto it. And here he's still until the last second, but he locks in the kill anyway. Nicely done by Elyse, as he gets a massive, basically a 1v3 at the end there. And Moe's gonna be forced out by the Molotov, but they still have no idea where Hobbit is. JDM finds him. Maybe Hobbit's position just doesn't even matter. If he can't get checked into this, a double kill comes out for him. He can go for more. He's dropped down. JDM misses the shot. It's a triple for Hobbit. Down into a one on one. Elyse versus Hobbit. Flash bangs out. Tapping the bomb. Elyse spamming through the smoke. That's gonna force the CT away. He's gotta reload now. But no one is on the defuse out into the open and Hobbit gets it. What a heroic performance in this round from him. The right moment and all four kills go his way. I mean, Hobbit just bagging kills left and right there. That was unbelievable from him. Four frags, three of those come through here. 40 seconds left. Gotta be holding the angle with the AWP. Gambit could either throw a mean fake or a mean split towards the same bomb site, but it's all on Twist. His aggressive stance. There come the nades over the top. Twist isn't going to peek with it. There's Hobbit coming up. He finds that kill. It's just the two ops remaining. Nitro trying to get to Catwalk. That could be huge, but a missed shot from JDM might just seal his fate. Nitro with one kill towards Connector. There's JDM peeking out. One more to get, but there's too many bodies. Bomb is down. Nitro's got that into a one-on-one. -on -one. Can he be the hero? He needs to peek out wide. He needs to do it quick. A Dren. He's in cover. And now the bomb can get planted just in the nick of time. With half a second to spare, the bomb has gone down. Nitro finds himself 1v1 versus Adren. Adren peeks out. Crosses in a CT, and he finds the frag. Adren's able to do it. One versus one. Completes the hat trick for himself in that round, and he keeps Gambit in there. Today, they won it against Renegades 1917. There's an opening kill from JDM. Elyse forced out by fire. And all of Gambit is stopped by flames everywhere they go. Flash through the smoke. Fitch is going to jump in. He's making progress into the bomb site. No one stopped him yet. They do know he's here. But how can they do anything about it? Yeah, those Molotovs actually missed. Allow Twist to keep his position up here on the warhead. So doesn't manage to deny anything on the back of it. Adren will fall over here in jungle. Two man advantage for Liquid is JDM. He's been pivotal thus far in this round. Gotta keep pushing in through jungle. Now has a liege there to support and connector. And they're just circling this A bomb site like vultures to a corpse. But Doja, well, he's gonna be bringing this round back from the dead as he's able to open up with two, finish him with one more in sandwich. But it's a one on one, JDM. And Mo and JDM wins it out. Four frags for him as he on the man with the orb holding the angle. See, Fitch is hesitant to even try and cross. Doesn't manage to deal with steel in the back line, so closing the gap that little bit more. Flash goes out, Mogan and now look to try and peek into this. They know where both these players are. That Sidri misses its mark. And as they start to walk in, Fitch is actually able to go ahead and take one. He's only got four bullets and JDM. He only needs one. Mo left one versus two, time ticket away. Go oh. for the no scope and somehow he's done it. One man left, it's JDM. And he's oh. gonna manage to do it. Mo is unreal. They get themselves a 16. Yet to get safe passage into the site. Guardian locking it down from the bomb train. This is no easy feat for Renegades here. Although catching Guardian off guard like that definitely helps out. Carrigan 
two pivotal frags early on and now has to try and clutch this out. One versus two finds the first as it's tagged low and Carrigan's gonna do it. On one, assuming Gambit don't come back and upset them again. Oh, look at this smoke play from Doja. Doja right up inside. He's gonna be able to hear all these footsteps going across after the uh, flashes fade away, of course. But he's on entry power is working <laughs> out well, but he can only get one. The trades are pretty wild, but it works out in G2's favor. And even better now with Bonnie finding one more kill onto Mo, Just leaving Fitch alive in a 1v3 situation. He's found one pickup here. Wrapping over, still trying to look for the kill over onto Body too, and he gets it. Quick headshot. Can he close out the... Yeah, it's good to see Kenny hit the shot after that uh, other round that we saw. Oh, still on the site though, picking up oh. two more kills and, and a look, Molly. he burned out Kenny as well. So all of a sudden, Mo showing up again with this massive play. Single, oh. single handedly turns the round on its heels and now has brought Mo down incredibly low. Just needs one or two more shots to be able to finish him off, but Mo's had a great round himself. B. Right, like, <laughs> literally, feel like that's like... It might work, though, because look at this, they've got... They've killed another player at A, so the, the illusion is kept alive, at least, that it could be an A hit. But, wow, they're gonna make it very obvious they're changing it up to B, because look at all these nades running into the A... Why Apex. is he right there? <laughs> what is he Apex doing? Just straight up peeking <laughs> Doja with a nade out. <laughs> doesn't kill heck? him, and then NBK peeks him from the other side, so... Definitely some mistakes being made just due to the length of the game at this point. Hobbit and Adrian trading oh it back, God. and Adrian with the snapshot flick kills Shocks. Kenny has to clutch now in a 1v2. And Gambit, let's see. They haven't been able to find him just yet, but they have a good idea where he's at. Kenny swings the perfect time, dips out to the other side. One more shot. Uh, secret. Uh, he's not going to see Happy though in ooh, time. He just gets it. Nice. He's going to sneak this right into crispy. the site. He exists down below, fires out there, and then flicks over to find Rez very quickly, too. Still a guy up on top of Shed they have to deal with, but RPK manages that kill pretty easily. Oh, and Draken misses his one and only opportunity there to pick up a shot. So now he's going to be forced out. The flashbang from Forrest is good, but Happy is still available to support his teammates, which leads to the elimination of Forrest. For Draken, it's 15th round, so he's got to do something, but it's not really a whole lot that he can do, so we'll just wait and see. They know where you are, bro. That's why he's checking his back. And there we go. There's the spot on Happy, but Happy. There. I'm not even kidding. I love that spot. You don't see Col it. Colt plays that. You don't see it used too often anymore, but when it is used, it usually finds pretty decent impact, as we saw right there. Rez trading these back, however, as he's found two. Ooh, Ooh and it's not Rez. He's going to resolve that issue of the double peak from spawn and Colt spot. I'm going to call it Colt spot until somebody can make up a better one. It's called Cold Corner. Ooh. What's a better ring to it? Cold shoulder. Cold, cold shoulder. shoulder. Ooh, Ooh, cold shoulder. I like that me, one. We're going to use that one. RPK left alone here now. 1v3, but it is winnable considering Take that life. they keep walking into him. God. Forrest and Exist both go down and trying to directly peek RPK from that same angle. But now he's got a different angle to play off of here. Rez is going to try to sneak up on him from heaven. Knows where he's at. Obviously, could have assumed he's moved, and I think he heard him fall there. Oh, there's no doubt. And Rez knows that he could be close. Bomb has been as we'll play this very carefully. Oh, oh Rez is instantly hedge down. We are into an even 3v3, though, after JDM pulls off at least his first kill there. But with the site very much under the control of Optic, this is still going to be a tough retake for Liquid. They don't have anyone moving in for mid. They don't have anyone moving in for apartments. It's just all three players trying to retake for market. So it's going to be a very direct retake. But at the same time, Liquid have two mollies along with pretty decent gunpowder here. So they still have a good chance of that. Both the mollies go out. They're gonna have to hurry up. No kits. They did the same thing on the last run, though. They've been uh, they've been very much drilled to run this to the timer. And there's their first kill there. Alu still alive, and they haven't even found HS just yet. Alu now dead. HS with the trade though brings us into a one v one. And HS just hides in the corner. We'll wait for Twist to try to further defuse. He gives himself a white, but the time is too far gone. Again, and HS will climb, spamming, trying to find something. JDM's now got to make a move, but he's still smoked off. And now there's fire in the face of Elise. There's one kit on JDM. They're running out of time and running out of HP. The op is so unwieldy in this situation, it's going to come right through the smoke. There's one kill, but Body gets both. The return fire, and Elysia's flank does not pan out. It opens up the avenue for G2 to readjust. And that's a 14th for G2. I think that's the down's away in. Now the question is, how can that bomb go down when Freiburg oh. is still firing? Apex head does roll, and indeed looks like G2's eyes are going to roll if they can't get this bomb down. Imagine if we had the smoke there. There's the utility once again, an absence of it. Freiburg's won this round. Single handedly, potentially. Majeski's gonna be. Oh, Freiburg! Head after head, and it looks like he's now dead. Body will shut him down. Oh! oh! Body 
saves the day for G. Как Апекс и его банда сейчас начнет наказывать. Бомба выпала. Миксел не понимает, что происходит. Находится на Зиге. Ситуация 3 на 3. Миксел идет за колонну и все-таки не делает больше киллов. Фриберг 1-2. Да, причем очень красно имеется кейс, но Эпикс тут как тут и может сделать сейчас минус по Фрайбергу. В итоге Фрайберг делает минус 2. Да ладно! Два бомба стоит на дефолте. Сейчас одним из самых важных является Алла, который перемещается к монстру, но при этом Алла играет без э, своей штатной винтовки, без АВП. А вот Кеннис с АВП смотрит монстр, пытается найти, ловит хэд. Не знает до конца, где же находятся его соперники. Кеннис отыгрывает, ну, не самую лучшую сейчас. Кеннисом He's Skadoodle knocking out one very quickly, but he's been pincered, so Rez, Forrest, both picking up kills after that. Stewie finding one, but now he's alone, and now with the second kill, Nate! Nope. But not taken out of the picture just entirely. As the smokes give them access, did someone just... I thought I saw Cole push through the smoke just in time as the flash went out, but unfortunately, Device spotted him. Doesn't matter, Bolts gets it back. He knows there's an AWP there as well. Three kills for Bolts. He might have just saved the round, and indeed, the game is Dupree up and... The two versus one here. He sneaks through. That's an easy kill. Execution for Taco. Oh, oh, oh. The nade might do it, Matt. So he's slightly more aggressive. That gives up his position, though, and that gives Glaive the kill. Important kill as well. Astralis are looking to try and force this into extra rounds, extra innings, and Kyari takes out Bolt. Fallen still lost to the smoke. Oh! Denying the plant. That's done it. Fallen's done it. There's no time to plant. Fallen's done it, but Cole, no, he hasn't. Cole has gone down. They just barely get the kill with one second left. That's They're in disbelief as well. Look at the lap. Heading that direction down the upper holes as well. Good shot automatic. Fallen now down as well. That leaves a very precarious situation with Tarek finding fur because now Cole's gonna go back to get the bomb. He's cut them off. He's pre firing with the AK, but Rush catches Cole out looking aggressively for the AK in turn, and the CZ makes the play. Picked off one by one. It comes down to Tarek pushing the inside area. Nice one digs coming in from automatic at the same time. Let's have a look at this. Pretty sick. <laughs> See you later. Well, that sets the tone for the second half. <laughs> that, I mean, certainly does. Just sitting there waiting. And he's like, not even done, man. He's just chasing them. They're running away down the hallways. Not a factor. However, timing goes the other way as well. As Taco just barely gets toward the banana, it leaves Majisk in a one versus two. And they know he's at the back of the site. That is a ungodly flash because he would have been holding on for dear life, hoping they weren't going to peek on the back of it. They didn't. And as he gets his vision restored, standing in the open as well, he finds Taco. It's down to Cold, who's the toughest man to go against, but an AK wins, and Majisk is looking sharp. There we go. They've managed to do it. They've reset SK Gaming. Comes down to the one versus two. Majisk boy step. So he's able to do so. He just is still looking from new box. Interesting setup with Mixwell still inside of the site. No one towards Banana. That is confirmed by Taco, so they'll be looking. Orange is one. Nowhere really to hide as he tries to get in by the fountain. Still, Mixwell does get a kill. Surprised he doesn't get double peeked from Fallen, who was trying to pick out Magisks. And as he gets picked off inside of the corner, Alu, Magisk is able to pop back out. He's got this down to a one on one taco with it. Now they're starting to make some noise. All it takes yeah, is look at Cold to hit one of these shots. Cold's position's perfect. If Alu's not fast, it's off first off. And on the peak, Cold is much quicker because Alu never knew he was there. Oh my goodness. But just couldn't react in time. Neither could Cold, but they spot each other, and that confirms to Cold not only did the first kill, but they're inside of the site, and he is posted. And he is ready. Smoke thrown. It hits him. Does Majisk hear it? Because that'll indicate that he's much closer than he is. Oh. I have a feeling cold wrapping the long way. Found Ooh, or not from Freiburg. <laughs> How's he hit that shot? It's great position for Freiburg. Nice intention, but didn't really work out at all. It's Mages Boy, who's been a thorn in the SK side. No man's land. Whew, good lord, that was another magnificent shot from Cold Zero. Five seconds remaining. The bomb will be planted, but still a two on two situation. It's very realistic at this point. That shot confirms it for Mixwell. Cold Zero up against it now. HS and Mixwell to try and take him down. A very difficult clutch on both sides of the server here. Cold Zero opens things up. He's trying to find the second kill now. Three in total. HS down to 28 points of health. One more shot will do it for Cold Zero. Just completely confident there, but HS somehow outpositions him, outplays him, and gets the final shot. Very, very quickly over towards bathrooms to keep them honest. Doge is burning alive. He's down to 15. He got Molotov that didn't get out in time. He almost has no HP. Adred has to cheat over towards the B bomb site now. 40 seconds left on the clock. 
And it all comes down to this hit from C9. They're going to have to come through smoke. That's exactly what Doja and Hobbit want. Yeah, the one kind of saving grace is the Fitch has gone aggressive up the toilets. Has netted them a decent bit of information. So now Moe's been allowed to ro start to rotate down towards B as well. Flashes rain in. Hobbit able to open things up. In with the double. The Max 7 is prevailing. Hobbit, what are you doing? He's able to take himself a third. He might have done enough to pull this round back as Fitch is hot on their heels on the flank. Gonna try pushing through the smoke, but Rush shuts him down. And now it's Mo. One versus two. Eight HP to his name. And a scout in hand. Rush, one off of the ace. They needed him to step up here, and he has. In spite of the attempted heroics from be grouped up over here towards this a bomb site. An automatic, well, oh, Leon is already looking to try and potentially throw some spanners in the works as he was holding close to middle. Now gonna opt to play things a bit safer. Falls back to the warm embrace of his teammates, but Skadoodle already gonna be feeling a different embrace. It's the embrace of death. He's gone down. Rush does what he can to start to claw things back. It's gonna fall into a four and four. Bitch has pushed all the way up though, and they're not ready for this. Catches them unaware. They're doing all they can to keep things even, and they will. Two on two, automatic showing no sign of giving up inside of A. And he's able to fin it up, finish it off with a 4K. Yeah, Gambit, they're pushing down, as you say. It is going to be all eyes on Stewie here, while Skadoodle holds off long. They've rotated automatic ground very preemptively. It's a good read from Cloud9. In comes the push, the wall of smokes goes down, and Stewie, he's able to open up with one, make it two. And this push being picked apart here by Stewie on the AWP. They've continued pushing into him, and this man, there's no stopping him. He's in with three, and now Doja left to clutch this out. One versus four, it's not looking likely, but he's worked himself into an angle. They don't know that he's here just yet. Stewie peeks into it, and that is somehow still alive here. Finally dealt with. The bomb plant, gonna get denied, and that's massive as Hobbit now finds himself one versus two. Make that one on one, the MAC-10. Surely this is impossible. He's done damage, and Tarek just waits, just sits behind the box. There's so much riding on this for Cloud9. They need to get off to a good start here. And time just ticking down. Both players adamant on just staying their ground. I can't believe Tarek hasn't moved. Yeah, the discipline right now. Finally, he's gonna break it, out he goes! The A side is seems Draken, no AWP, he'll be at long A, and Fallen in the bathrooms, Exists got his work cut out for him here. Angle held, Exist hesitant, checking all of the angles, really shot from Fallen, in fact, it wasn't even go. going to be a shoulder peak, Draken's added to that with the AK kill on the bolts at long, that allows the entrance and the bomb plant at the very least. The rotation in a two versus two, Favors SK on HP, but not in positioning because they're split up entirely and Draken's gonna get aggressive to try and catch Cold off. Good position. The AK can't find the shot. 15 for Cold. He can now afford to look for information as Exist will not burrow into the typical post-plant position. He'll wait to see where Taco presents himself. The in-game leader of NIP, the lowest performer for them in this tournament so far, and a two versus one up against Cold Zero and Taco. The bomb is down, he's towards long. He has no utility to work with it. He has to fight and see if he can make it a one versus one before anything begins here. He'll successfully do that, and he gets both kills! The spray control comes through and Exist has done it! He pulls it off against all the- actually gone to NIP. Doesn't help the man. Oh. They all count. Draken, that one counts as well. Two deagle shots in the round. It's suddenly a five versus three for NIP and Draken. He knows there's a gun on the other side of the flower pots. Good shot from Cold. But he knows there's likely more SK players as well. And he's right. Assuming so, my goodness, Forrest. This is unbelievable. The shots he's hitting right now. He's just toying with them. Looking for more. Long A finally taken down. It's a three versus two. Cold Zera and Taco have to try and salvage the round as they make their way towards the A sides. Taco looking for the flags, but it might not matter. The bomb goes down. 25 seconds. How have NIP done this? The shots were just stellar. And now Cold Zera, I don't think he has a chance in this one. He won't even have time to get the bomb down here. NIP just looking for the final frag. It's Forrest. It's Get Right. But if you can find a way to be. Somewhat clever, he will, and this is his play at it. It's if anyone goes to check A main, he's got the angle for it. Yeah, exactly. As soon as they walk in by the forklift to even consider peeking that direction, he's got the headshot lineup. He's also got a chance to peek out when they get on top of the ball. They do have a chance to defuse it in behind, though. I don't know that Ket right realizes it. He's got the first kill. Kit, don't it in. Unfortunately, not. It was just big. Man, already, make that two. 
As Bolts gets Forest, it's on to Rez. Yeah, well, it's been hot, but a tough proposition in front of him to go one versus three smokes. Covering the inside of the side, give him a chance he can fade inside. He can still isolate this down if he's fast enough to find Taco. Because Bolts is still working in from Chuck. That smoke has favored him massively. He thinks he's gotten away with it. He thinks he's he covered. Has. He is indeed. Bolts is nowhere near. Bolts doesn't oh! read it. And MIP get it. Rez barely wins the round. What amazing play he's had. Manages at least to burrow back. And hold the op at an angle that isolates exist first. As soon as he peeks. Fallen should be ready. They'll tap the bomb. That force has fallen back in, but a smoke off. He can't push through. They can try to hold the defuse. If Exist can play the inside angle, that's exactly what he's going to do. Now he's got coverage for his teammate, but it's 10 seconds and Fallen. Edge of the smoke somehow hits it. Track and responds, but there's no time. So smart from Fallen. That gives himself an open plan. He's in a difficult situation. Two versus uh, to open up the A bomb site even further. Two on two now as he commits with the flashbang here. Rest to defend. He's been hot so far. Can he? Maybe find this round for an IP. It looks likely as he takes down Fur. Great recovery from Rez in terms of position. He was a little bit aggressive, hoping that they would win out the exchanges. When they lost Forrest, he had to run to get behind a box, and it catches them off, but it's down to the one-on-one. -on -one. And Get Right was not detected by Cold on the flank the first time around, so Cold's not going to know, but he has great position, and Get Right has to make a noise dropping. That reveals that he's on the right side. As Cold to cover the angle. It's a common position, which gives Get Right a bit of a chance to pre-fire the peak. But it's still hard to get the lineup right toward the headshot and Cold pre-fires instead. Shadow showed and he's able to find it to give SK the round. Gonna do what he can. And actually in the blink of an eye, it's Skadoodle versus Olaf Meister. Skadoodle has been so good in these pistol rounds for Cloud9 throughout this event. You can just see how much talent there is on the face side of things. The way that they're trading those kills, pulling themselves. Guardian with a huge double kill to keep him in the round. And Skadoodle has no armor. He's got the Glock, so at diff this is going to be a difficult fight at certain ranges, and Olaf Meister adjusting his position. He might just catch him out, and he is! It's a one-tap, it's anti- Peek to come on in, it's automatic trying to open up with the Deagle. This is going to be tough, though. There's no, there's no real utility in the Cloud9 side. They don't have anything to start this attack off with. They just kind of have to go for it at a certain point. And also, Rain being pushed up in ladder room, he can get information if he hears it. Oh, that's a great boost! There it is! The shot rings true! Rain's gonna be forced more passive. Yeah, that's the signal for Rain to get the hell out of there now. Giving up that more offensive position, gonna get caught out. Cloud9. They are finding these frags. Down goes Olaf and Guardian suddenly left one versus four. He's able to make it a 1v3. Make that 1v2, but Stewie. He's not in the mood to. With that though, Cloud9 now starting to double back over here towards the A-bomb site. Tarek fading away from B and it's Rush. Down here, Ivy to hold this angle, gonna be doing the dance with Carrigan. Automatic opens up, Carrigan gonna take one back in retort. Olaf gets found though, trying to flank round from behind and that's given up this man advantage. Nico does pounce into action with the rifle. Trades go left and right and actually Automatic now gonna be the man to fall. As Carrigan's tearing them limb from limb, Guardian does go down, and now it's the 1v1. At this time, it's Carrigan to try and make it a reality. He's found three already. Skadoodle is able to get the bomb down. Carrigan repositions, and he's able to find it. Skadoodle does come up. I know this is going wrong here for Cloud9. It's a 2-1-2. Two two. They've got the bomb down. Nico and Carrigan start this retake pushing on in, and Nico, he's already been able to do damage. It's Rush and Stewie holding close on the site. Carrigan slipped by, they spy him out in the open. Carrigan falls and now Nico, one versus one as the D chimes in again. He's gonna hold the angle, does the damage and Nico's done it. Also takes the frag, Nico and Rain. Combo tag low, these scouts are doing damage right now for Cloud9 as everyone within phase is within inches of death. They're gonna start to peel away from A, see what this B-bomb site has in store. The one issue for them is going to be that Stewie, with his trusty Mag-7, has taken a more forward position over here towards B. Should be able to get some, some kills with this here, as we've seen FaZe just kind of walk into the crosshair. Rain coming down the stairs. Stewie's just waiting, and it's going to be an easy one. There's the first, there's the second. Something to cheer for, and a third. 
Triple kill. Nico and Olaf Meister still alive with huge advantage in terms of weaponry and arsenal. So still, you could you'd almost say this is even for, for these two teams. Like it still feels like FaZe can easily come back into this. Yeah, the one difference maker here is Tarek, who's pushed all the way down short, gonna be holding it. And that allows everyone from Cloud9 to rotate into this A bomb site. FaZe starting to push in, pushing on up. The Wall of Smokes reigns supreme as Cloud9 Try to take a peek over the top, an automatic, he's not done just yet with this Deagle. Gonna decapitate a second, Olaf Meister tries to trade back, but very quickly he's caught out in the open. And has to pivot back and forth, he'll be shut down, Kerrigan falls, and Cloud9 with a Deagle. Headshot to Kerrigan, they turn it around, he can't follow up and find Rain, they were close together, but Forrest is still able to swing inside of a sight, Nico has it down to a one-on-one -on -one with Forrest, the first full gun round. Massive if NIP are able to win this as well. It's a, a full fourth, well, not a full, but a fourth round loss bonus with no plants. And Nico's gonna try and one-up Forrest's position. And it should work. He's staring inside of the site, knowing bombs down. Nico's behind it. Forrest has to consider. He has it. He flashed off. He's got no further shots to fire as Kerrigan's able to take him down the open. And a stuck position. And AWP stuck at the cannons is never going to help because they get the angle as they walk in. Olaf follows up. It's Kerrigan immediately to take down Resonance. Draken could find at least to get Olaf, but in a one on one. Another 1v1 situation. Draken has been great this tournament for NIP. One of his first showings on the big stage here. He's up against one of the legends of the game, Kerrigan. Now upgrading to the M4A4. Draken has no kit to work with here. Waiting for the mistake to be made. The fact that Get Right was caught in the open and Forrest didn't fully get back inside of the site. He had nowhere to go. Really cost them dearly. As another bomb plant comes through, Draken sticks with the AWP. He's elected to do oh! so as he fires up. Can't quite catch Kerrigan. He'll get in behind the APC instead. It's a flash from far. Draken does not have a kit. There is one down. Now he's picked it up on the way by. Shot 40 and gets away. He has the bomb as well. He can run this to the A site. Molotov to hold off Draken from chasing him down now on three HP. One bullet would have put him out of commission. It's a situation where you'd almost expect him to keep the AWP based on his HP so he could just get the one shot and get it over with, but he's gone to the AK instead. What an absolute nightmare round has been for an IP. It's Guardian now with the advantage. Draken low, he comes storming up towards middle, has no kit once again. He's left in another clutch, almost an identical situation to before. He spots Guardian, this time he comes out on top and somehow exists, gets away without buying. Phase's side because they have no information with those smokes down, including one that was on top of drop. I think that's dissipated at this point, but regardless, they're pushing through bottom middle with Forrest to lead the way. Get right to the one with the bomb. Res and Forrest should be the front lines. Second rotation does make it to the site. Rain is not going to peak unless he absolutely has to from stables. He's so vulnerable behind the wood, but only if they have the information that he's there. As Nico starts to approach the flank as well. Forrest inside of the site spots one. Now that's when Nico approaches. Forrest wasn't ready for it. Deagle finds yet another kill. Kerrigan's followed it up. It's suddenly down to get right. And he's gone as Rain picks up the CZ. Has the best chance to set the crossfire to find Guardian or does he? Because Guardian Whoa! nails it. Oh my god, get right. That is old school as well. What? Yeah, really nice Molotov that. Good teamwork. Alley oop from Exist there. It's up to Forrest now to find kills towards Logan. Backed up by Rez, but Rain. Another Deagle headshot here. FaZe coming out swinging with the pistols. They're not allowing NIP to get the match point easily. It's Carrigan with another frag with that CZ. Four on two situation. Carrigan starting to come to life. It's all down to exist. Surely he can't do anything with this situation. Takes one towards the APC. He's got so much work to do here, but he has got time. They were so timid to walk around the corner. Res and Forrest, they didn't want to trip over each other's lines. And Olaf gets exist in the back just when... Blown off! Rain will come forward in the arch, but it might not be enough at this point. Remember yesterday against an IP, they gave up one kill in four rounds. To SK at one point, good shot exists. They've been very good on the CT sides once they get rolling in. They're rolling now. Looking for a third straight round with Rain and Nico standing in their way. Rain's done well to get around the arch considering they pushed in toward the boiler. Spotted now, however, from the pit, from Forrest. And as he commits to that angle, Nico finally gets one on him. That's going to open up the A site. The anchor position gone. And I don't think they were anticipating such a deep presence from FaZe Clan. So they'll be able to get a plant off this. And then it'll be a 3 2 retake. Yeah, Exist has to wait. He can't challenge his bomb. Jordan, oh, maybe he can. Oh. It was a good attempt, but it's not enough. If he gets that kill, the round's over. Gabriel's going to push the smoke. It's not enough. Two versus one. He's left Res for dead.
He had to wait for his teammate to come through, but he took the challenge. Now Rez with the AWP has to find the first shot. Nails he knows it. he's low. He knows he's low. He knows Le Nico's tagged. He goes to the pistol. But he's alone as well, so he's already on his horse. Dragon's gonna join them. It's gonna be a straight A hit. Dragon's stuck. A man down. Kefai tries and finds it actually inside of the smoke once Kerrigan lands. Rain pulls one back, but Forrest in the corner this time. He's given up on Pit. Hasn't been favorable to him in the last three rounds this time. A better position, but he's still traded back. Nico with the kills. Rez again on rotation, and it's down to Guardian, who has to plant default. As Rez runs behind him fast as he dares, slows up just in time because Guardian was ready and waiting. In fact, he's getting impatient and he wants to be aggressive. And the post plants! Oh! Guardian, my man! What a shot as he finds Rez, and he goes back for more! He's even quicker against Draken, and that is why he is a legend! I told you he's just... ...anyone is forced this time rather than play the pit. He'll hold the apartments, but a much different position as he gets more forward. Reigns crossed over the smoke. That's exactly what Forrest wants to push. He's in between two. He's in between two and somehow finds one. He may get both. He takes Reigns! He can't react fast enough as Guardian tech down, takes down Draken as well. It leaves us three aside, and they want to go quickly on toward A as a result of the kills. You know, there's going to be less defense inside of the site. There is still one man, though, on the corner. Common position, but tough to find. Good find from Get Right. He trades that. The trades have been back and forth until now. Finally, an unanswered kill goes oh. away. I say unanswered toward FaZe. It's Rez. And he knows that Olaf's in the corner. My goodness, that name comes so close. 12 HP as he stays alive. He was in mid-20s when it was thrown his direction, and Olaf's trying to play with him, trying to bait out the off shot. Does get one. But Rez was ready to move immediately because he was hoping that in baiting himself out, he would turn the shot the other way and baiting Olaf out in return. Surely this doesn't work out. But Rez, it has to be the quick scope. That work will be very beneficial to phase he calls for his teammates to rotate through. Guardian set, but doesn't have vision. The smoke is down. He'll try and time some shots. For an additional smoke to cut oh. off the second off. He's oh. trying it. It's a tough angle. There's really not much on the other side. He nearly walks into the flames. He's on 19. Still finds Draken as they walk around. He nearly found Forrest, who this time gets position. He's going to grab the op because they're desperate to find picks immediately. And little do they know that already behind the smoke, up close, Olaf is approaching. Rain's gone through Banana this time. Get right has to play passive. They can't go for the fancy crossfire and ruins. As Forrest is baited out of one shot. Turns around, no one immediately on his heels. They are there though! Good raid from Forrest and good night, Olaf! He it's just, Guardian he, who's gonna back off. He knew every single time that someone would be coming through. He just had to get the timing correct. Nails a shot of Banana, comes back towards the ruins and takes down one of the key players at Olaf Meister. I to make contact from Boiler. Here we go. Shot from speaking of that rain. Eagle at range. Three players still on that side as well in quads. We've got to be careful for us if he wants to go back for more. Nade will discourage him. This is the problem we had on Cobblestone. Every chance they get, there's wow. no trade potential. And it's Nico with another oh beautiful headshot. Make it two. And NIP just can't do anything against these pistols. They seem to be so caged. They're so careful, but it's working against them. And Nico, two through the smoke, of course. They managed to pick up a rifle. It's up to Draken and Forest to make this round a possibility. Just hiding right now. Good luck. Oh, Olaf Meister got them locked in in the underpass. Here's, Here's one. Here Forrest run away. He knows they're in banana. He'll go. Conf confirmation from top mid. No one else is there. He's going to be perfectly on their heels. What an unbelievable series of shots from Deagles. And Olaf waits. He knows they're both there. Might as well make it perfect. And he will. Forrest turns around. Guardian has him. What? Otherwise, there's no chance of winning the round. He doesn't do it. Rain, a very comfortable kill. They run in. It's just looking clumsy now from NIP. After losing to those pistols, it's all falling apart. They'll rush B to try and get back into this game. It works out for now. Forrest have won, but they're up against Nico. One of the world's oh. best, and he finds a three-man spray down. Olaf Meister chiming in. I think that's it. We're absolutely done on Inferno, and it will be FaZe tying up the series. Four versus one. Draken, good luck, my friend. Oh, just as he looks away as well, just to make matters worse. Four kills for Nico. He had two in the... Start to work out brown holes instead. Let's pressure again toward Olaf. Nico is still close behind the smoke of the E-Box. He could get toward Pop Dog for rotation, but straight contact. NIP's in. And it's Olaf, the only man to defend him. Already spotted as well on top tankers. Trying to play both angles. Had to. And he manages to at least get a kill. Swings back. Great read. Rez goes down as well. Nade's gonna go deep, but Nade's already planted, or Bomb's already planted, rather, excuse me, as Draken. A great shot to Nico, cuts off part of the rotation. And he's not sold on the shoulder peaks. Further damage done to Kerrigan, but that leaves him alive. He's lagged up onto nine. It means it's easy for Forrest to pick him up, but he's traded back, and it's on to Get Right, who's got a Molotov ready. 
They've got no smoke map. This could be massive if get right times as well. He's going to deny them the bomb defuse. They're going for it now. It's early though, I think. I think it's a bit early because Guardian does have a kit. And that'll be extinguished by the time the kit is applicable. And they oh! cut him off. All off with the shot. And Guardian gets on it immediately. They just barely had enough time. All off the map. As he goes out, he realizes they are getting closer. It's existing. Rez. Low HP. Both vulnerable and susceptible of going down to Guardian as they try and get closer with Rez. He's got to be very careful. It is the AWP. A missed shot would allow them to get the kill, but it's forced instead that actually finds it. Nico with spray. He will get from behind the truck to find Get Right. He's looking for a headshot to Forrest. That goes the other oh! direction, but again a flank from all. Forrest once again with a Desert Eagle causing absolute mayhem. It's a two on two as Rain almost guarantees it now. It's going to be Draken with no Diffuse Kid, no nades. Just a Desert Eagle to keep. NIP's hope alive there. Olaf checks it, but he's low on HP. Draken so close, and Olaf was not ready. He wants the AK. He's actually got it from that range. I'm surprised. I didn't think he was close enough at all, but picks it up. Gives him a chance. Rain has the ball. He's not yet planted. He'll peek back out. Draken's got it. Before they were ready to transfer their attention, but it's Draken that gets him in return. And the fact that he had nowhere to hide. Nico. The ball. Good damage as well. Transfers back over. He and Guardian combined. And Exist again has to clutch. What? It's Rain. He's gotten confident now because he goes back to Guardian. I thought he was going to wait for the smoke to bloom to go for the bomb. That's unbelievable. Exist. See now. Rez opens things up in quiet this game, but that's a good opening. It's up to Carrigan, the in game leader, to fend them off. If he finds nothing here, this could become problematic. He doesn't. Exist opens up the A bomb site. Huge win. But the HP is low. A chance. Olaf and Guardian, the newest additions. Two face. Good shot from Guardian to find the first. It's Forrest as well to go down. So an AWP for Rez exist on an AK. He goes high, that goes above the Molotov. They spot it and exist. It's another beautiful shot. What a game he is having as Olaf has to go aggressive. He has a kit, but no needs to work with, and Rez will swap out. He wants Exist to play the long angle now that he has the HP, and Rez, therefore, can be sacrificial. Olaf will find that kill, but he knows it's not likely, or is it? He's actually going to continue on. I thought he'd back off immediately, but he fancies his Done. chances Exist doesn't have a dare to peek. And you're right, he's won it on time alone. They'll tie the game back up 6-6, in fact, Exist. Just to add the... Rez with his flank, this could be everything. Exist is boosted up. The final moment coming, can Exist get anything done? Oh! He gets the double flank! This is it, it's happening! Three versus one, Carrigan, he needs to step up tremendously, gets two kills, surely he can't pull this one off. His two kills in this round, some of his only in this game, he's been very slow, but he's certainly stepping up, he somehow pulls it back to a one-on-one. -on -one. A battle of the in-game leaders as Exist got a double, and Carrigan has opened up the round, he can run it back, he spots Rez, takes the fight, but doesn't need to. Smarter for him to just get to B and get the bomb down, why risk it when he can control the play? So a retake. In a one-on-one, -on -one, Rez with just a kit. No nades between he and Kerrigan for him to pick up additionally. And Kerrigan's going to stay on top of the site without the information. He could go vents, but the flash confirms he's not. Rez will go aggressive. And the young man who has stepped up and carried NIP in this event could carry them to a championship against Kerrigan. But Kerrigan pulls it back. A best of five against players. There's not many teams in the world that can even come close to beating them. It took all five maps as a crawling affair and exist. The in-game leader is the one that steps up to find them the championship. And Rez is an absolute legend. Welcome to the big stage. Welcome to victory for this new NIP roster. And interestingly, Henry, if you remember last year when we commentated the Grand Finals, I mistakenly said NIP Oakland 2017 you champions. Did. Someone find that clip. Little did I know I'd been to the future. Who would have thought? And they get their name in the Grand Slam now as well. FaZe. A hard fought battle, but an incredible performance from the ninjas. On this stage last year, on this stage again, with threat on board, and this man to carry the NIP!